High-end embedded processors need advanced development tools. Microchip has recently released the MPLAB X IDE. With the release of MPLAB X, Microchip continues to be the only silicon vendor with a unified 8, 16 and 32-bit IDE. This is a completely new open source platform that should still be familiar to existing MPLAB users. For the first time, Microchip customers can now develop on Microsoft Windows, Linux or Mac OS. Customers' existing investment in development tools is also preserved since the majority of our tools will work on any of the new operating systems. So now let's take a quick tour of MPLAB X. So here we can see this, the initial startup screen of MPLAB X. So let's take a, a quick exploration of uh, some of the new features. You can see here on the Learn and Discover tab of the Start page, there's a range of icons which will take you to information to get you started quickly. There's a quick start guide, release notes, uh, a manual video that describes the various steps and things you can do in MPLAB X. There are icons that will allow you to create new projects, import projects, open a range of sample projects. There are some videos which show you some tricks, tips and short guides on how to do things and links to some of the microchip forums and community pages. On the My MPLAB ID there are links to projects that you might have recently opened, newsletters, and other quick links. One of the nice things about MPLAB X IDE is that it's an extensible IDE. We can add new plugins to allow new capabilities, perhaps an RTOS viewer or a different kind of edit tool. And the way we do that is, is with the capability of dynamically downloading uh, plugins from external websites. And on the my MPLAB IDE page is, is a link that will take you to that. So you can very simply add in these extra features. So let's have a look at how we get started with a, with a new project. So we're going to try creating a, simple, a very simple new project. We'll create a standalone project from the microchip embedded type. And it's very simple to use uh, wizard will take you through the steps. We select uh, the family of processor that we're going to use, in this case a PIC32, and the particular part in the family. You select the development tool you're going to use. One of the nice things about MPLAB X is that all of the development tools that are used with it, PICKIT, ICD3, RealIce, are all serialized so that you now associate the development tool with the project. This has a really nice feature or an add-on feature in that uh, since the development tools are associated with the projects you can have multiple projects running at the same time. MPLAB X also supports multiple tool chains so you can have for instance multiple 32-bit compilers perhaps an old one for, a, for an old project or this new project we can use the latest version of the compiler. Finally it wants to know where to locate that project so we'll give it a title So we've now got the, the basic outline of the project, listing the files that are all part of this project. And at the bottom, we can see in the, in the dashboard, we can see a, a summary of the device, the particular, particular version of the software, the compiler that's being used, the part, how much memory is being consumed. Obviously nothing at the moment, we haven't written, it, written any code, and, and a summary of the breakpoints available and the debug resources being used. So let's go ahead and add a simple uh, main file to this project. 
and we can do this from a, a template so we can select a microchip embedded C32 compiler template we're going to rename this to main Now we've written our code, albeit a very simple application, we can try downloading it and debugging it. One of the nice areas of MPLabX is its very simple user interface and the, and the really easy way which you can get started with a project. So if we want to compile, download and debug this application, which will hopefully work, we can just go up to the top here, press the debug run, If we want to then pause the application, go to the pause button, halt it and the cursor stops at the line where the program counter currently is. We can sing single step through the code. And we can carry on executing. Finally when we're finished debugging we finish the debugger session with the square icon at the top. MPLabX includes advanced editing features. One of the main ones is a real-time parser that continuously analyzes the code looking for errors as you type without even having to compile. Here we've introduced a, a made-up special function register called TRISK, which doesn't actually exist on the part. The, the pre-parser has detected this as an error and highlights it, marks it in red on the right hand side of the screen and underlines it. By hovering over it you can see what the actual fault is. Let's see now how we import an existing project. Many of the application examples in the microchip application libraries are already provided in MPLabX format. But there is a utility that allows you to import existing MPLAB8 projects, allowing you to bring in your old projects into the new IDE. OK, having loaded the existing project, we can select a particular platform. MPLABX supports the concept of configurations. A single project can have multiple configurations, each co configuration corresponding to a different hardware platform, device, compiler settings, hardware choices and so on. This way you could build one project with multiple different guises. You can see here that we're selecting the hardware platform specific to the board that we want to demonstrate. Once selected we can perform a clean and build and the code will automatically be generated for the chosen platform. Once it's finished being built we can then go on if we wanted to to debug this application or just download it into the device. With the ever more complicated applications being developed the engineer will certainly welcome a variety of different ways of navigating through the code. You can see here a fairly complicated program and in order to envisage what is going on sophisticated tools are needed. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. If we simply hold over function calls MPLABX will actually highlight them and say what the parameters are, what the type of a function is. So we can see what's going on how, what the type of a structure is and what the individual members are. We have facilities for a call graph, so let's have a look at that. We can select a function, show the call graph for that function, which appears in the bottom of the screen here. 
let's make this a little bit bigger. And you can see here on the left hand side is the function main and there's a list of all of the, of the functions that main calls. On the right hand side is a, a graphical view and we can see here both the function itself, any of the functions it calls, the parameters that are passed to it. If we double click on any of the functions it will take us into it. If we click on one of the functions we can look at the functions that that then in turn calls. In this way we can build up a, a visual image of what the, the actual application is doing, what functions are called, what the parameters are and so on, aiding our debugging and design. We can of course export this image as a, as a picture to help with documentation. So let's say we start editing the code and we unfortunately introduce an error by declaring a variable in the wrong location MPLAB X incorporates a local history. So it is continually recording all of the edits that you make to a file and saving them. So we can now go and have a look at the local history for this particular file. And we can find out what we changed and when, allowing us to revert the code back to an earlier form. So that's been a quick whirlwind tour around the new MPLAB X IDE. Hopefully you'll find lots of interesting new features in there. Give it a try for your next project. I hope you found this overview of the new PIC32 parts and their associated development tools to be useful. Thank you for watching.